Hello, hello, hello. Welcome in. Delightful to see you here. Thank you for clicking on the Logical Love Podcast. As always, if you enjoy this episode, I would appreciate a review. If you like to have more of this kind of content, you can do so by following the Instagram. That's at Love Logician. We got a blog, we got podcasts, we got newsletters, we got it all. But today, the topic of discussion is dating apps. Dating apps, porn, and the exploitation of women. And this is something that maybe I share an opinion I have that maybe not a lot of other people do, but this is just a way I've seen it. Whether it's, you know, working with women, coming up, just the way I see things, I think there's something that maybe we might be missing. I mean, if we look at it, think about this for a second. You know, porn is a business thriving off of the pandering to men's sexual desires. You know? But the thing is, these desires, like hung, they aren't always bad because they're natural. You know, they're, it's very natural for a man to want to make love to a woman, to want to have sex. That's biology. That's not bad. But they can be done badly. And usually when these things are done badly, it's when we do them unnaturally. You know, it's natural to be hungry, but I've never seen someone get unhealthy by eating a bunch of apples, a bunch of chicken, a bunch of broccoli. But when you start messing around with that unnatural food, you start going to McDonald's, get you your chicken nuggies, that can get pretty nasty pretty fast. So, biologically speaking, women control the gateway to sex, right? While men, on the other hand, control the gateway to commitment. These two forces have worked in tandem in our natural world to bring balance to what we clumsily call dating slash mating. And again, these have been there since the beginning of time. And they're not bad desires. But things we do now, like porn, porn will leverage this male desire for sex into making money at a woman's expense. Whereas dating apps, on the other hand, leverage this female desire for a relationship and attachment into making money at a woman's expense. So I just want you to think about something here. Dating apps are mostly male. You know, depending on the app and the data you use, they're anywhere between 76 and 90% men on an app. You know, the only time we don't see this huge disparity is in some parts of Europe. And what this disparity does, right, is like, if you talk to men, you know, for, for most men on a dating apps, they're frustrated. They can't seem to get a date. They can't seem to get, you know, swipes, likes, any attention, right? Whereas women, on the other hand, being in such a minority, being the scarce resource that they are, they get a lot of attention. But they can't seem to find anybody that wants them more than, you know, a casual sexual encounter. But what this does, it makes profits. Right. So, again, if we look at this with the data, dating apps, mostly male, we also see this kind of same thing run true in, in porn. You know, if you look at Pornhub, their most recent report I could find reports similar disparities as over 75 percent of Pornhub's users are male. Now, in both of these businesses, dating apps and porn, women are the minority, but are being exploited for capital gain. They are the finite resource. They are the thing that, again, they're the rare thing, but they are often exploited and they don't get what they want, even though they have what all these businesses, men, are valuing. Now, I want to stop here for a second. I don't mean that it's bad in a, in a moral sense right? It, it is what it is. 
It, it is what it is. But the way things are done badly, in my opinion, is when we are mindlessly doing them. You know, what makes it bad isn't porn itself, isn't the dating apps itself, but the fact that we are unaware of our biological programming and we end up enslaved to it. We end up mindlessly eating foods we don't like, putting people in our body we don't like, spending our finite life with people that really could care less if we live or die. So again, I don't mean this when I'm talking bad in a moral sense. It is what it is. And in my view, if we can bring awareness to this, it allows us to mindfully decide what we do by having an accurate map of the facts. Now, again, this isn't new. These things I'm talking about, it's in our biology. You know, males traditionally will pay and consume on things that get them attention of what they perceive as a fertile looking woman. You know, traditionally, regardless of species, males will do what's needed to have sex, but they usually don't do much more than that. You know, they'll do about what's needed to get inside a vagina. After that, you know, not much more. And, and look, I get it. So this is a biological fact we have to contend with. Males will buy, consume, and do things to get them the attention of what they perceive is that fertile-looking woman, right? Even if they don't know it, that's the unconscious processes going on. For the same reason porn needs women to make a profit, so too do dating apps. I mean, think about it. It's like how clubs or bars you'll see often will give free drinks to women on ladies' nights. They do that not to give charity, but they do it because they know that if they give out free drinks to women, that it attracts more women, and that the women being there attracts men to come and consume, often excessively. <laughs> and, and in that, that becomes a net profit. It becomes a capital gain, all the while probably pandering to our base desires. Now, again, anyone who's watched a few porno movies, as they say, has likely seen a situation where it seemed like a girl was being taken advantage of. It seemed a little icky. It felt a little gross, even though the woman consented to it even though she was being paid for it, even though, you know, we say it's empowering, it still doesn't feel right, right? We've seen those situations. Now, what I'm trying to bring attention to for the sake of this podcast is that the same thing is happening on dating apps. Only difference is women aren't getting paid for, you know, getting ran through by strangers, strange men who are paying for super likes and swipes. They don't get paid for that. And actually, usually, not only do they give out their most valuable fertile years to men who could care if they live or die and help bolster, you know, Tinder's user base, but they often, again, not only do they not get paid, they usually end up splitting the check for the drinks. <laughs> Ah, women's empowerment. <laughs> it is a beautiful thing. And I say that facetiously. I say it jokingly. Because it is better to laugh than cry. Again, if we can bring attention to these things, we no longer have to just blindly subscribe to them. Because while the apps keep enticing women with the idea of committed relationships and boyfriends and someone to cuddle up with, someone that'll build a life with, someone they can connect with on all these levels, they actually are monetizing off of the horny men willing to pay for easy sex by swipes. I mean, the data kind of is out, and you probably know this anecdotally, but even if a girl finds a relationship after, of course, she's had sex with, you know, 10 to 15 strangers off the internet, 
this serves the business. You know, because again, it, it, it's it's getting her just like porn, that exploitation to use her beauty, use her fertility, use her youth to, for capital gain. Because in the course of that, say she got that one relationship and she had sex with, you know, 10 to 15 strangers, that right there has helped entice those men to stay on the app. You know, if if they were able to have sex with a girl, they didn't have to approach her at a bar. They didn't have to. Maybe they even have a girlfriend even. Maybe they're still cheating. I mean, there's a lot of data that says I think three out of ten Three to four out of ten of, of people on apps are already in relationships. They're using them to cheat. So if right there, you know, if, if they have had sex with this girl, again, didn't have to face the rejection, didn't have to, you know, take her on a bunch of dates, didn't have to go out and get to know her, didn't have to, none of that, right? They can have the apps. They can mass text everybody, hey, how you doing? It makes it easy. It entices those men to come back to the app because it becomes an easy way to get sex, right? And not only that, they're able to show their friends. And if you're a man, you've likely seen this. You know, hey, take a look at this girl. I had sex with this girl. Met her on Tinder. Had sex with this girl. Met her on Bumble. She was great at riding the D. She was good at, you know, this lady gave great head. And again, these are uncomfortable truths. I'm not saying these that I, that I subscribe to them. I'm not saying I've never done these things myself. I've never, I've never been that guy. But I tell you what, if you're a man and you've been around some other men, you're, you've seen this a lot, you know? And so what this does, right, is this is a great advertisement to other men of of Tinder success, of online dating, saying, hey, you should get on this. Look, I was able to have sex with this girl after I only saw her one date, two dates. I was able to have sex with her. She's beautiful, right? And as we all know, you know, word of mouth is like the best advertisement. And so all the while, it saddens me because we kind of exploit this, this the women in this. And we pander to the men's base desires, not really pushing them to be their, their best selves, you know? And this is all encouraged, you know, and not only that, it encourages all 10 of those guys, again, to keep swiping, not even to settle down with this one, because if, even if it would have been their dream girl, even if it would have been the perfect, most amazing thing, in the back of their head, they're thinking, shoot, I was able to meet this girl, have sex with her within two dates, never had to leave my house. I texted her in the shitter in the morning. I only had to buy her half of drinks twice. And they don't appreciate it. And then they, again, not looking at, the, at, at any blame here, but just think of it as, a, as an exploitative system. That the men, then, the man doesn't appreciate this, which is exactly what Tinder would want. So that way he keeps his Tinder gold plus whatever subscription. He keeps subscribing and he keeps swiping because that's how they make money. You know, it's not bad. Just like Instagram wants you on Instagram. Tinder wants you on Tinder. It's not bad. It is what it is. And and look, this is all to say, I, this is not even to mention the success rate of dating app relationships. Because we have a lot of good data on this that a lot of these relationships will likely have this woman that was, again, got onto this app under the auspices, under the guise of having a great relationship She's likely going to be back on the carousel for men to swipe through again in another one to three years. You know, the dating apps play to our base impulses, yet they never fulfill their true desires. Men end up seeing women who'd potentially have sex with them that they would swipe on. Women see men who'd potentially commit to them to swipe on. But the whole time, each of them are unfulfilled. Kind of like going to McDonald's really hungry, eating a bunch of food, and feeling really bad when it's over. Look, 
all of this being said, this doesn't mean that dating apps are, are bad. This doesn't mean that you can't use them. But what it does mean, it's important to remember that we cannot control the dating apps. We cannot control the fact that they are going to play to the simplest way to make money. Just like the bar is going to have ladies night to make sure they get more profits in, the apps and tenders are going to try to attract young, beautiful women to take pictures of themselves. So that way guys will see this. They will pay for swipes. That's the profit margin. We can't control these dating apps. But if you wake up, if you become mindful to these unconscious biological processes, well, then we can start to control how, why, and if we let them into our lives. Thank you very much for listening. With love and logic. Floyd.